Greetings Star Wars toy fans, this is Jim, and thank you again for stopping by my YouTube channel. Well, what you see in front of you is a 1984 Imperial Shuttle, and it was a recent acquisition that I just picked up for a fairly reasonable price, and I'll talk more about that in a future video. But since I had it apart, I thought I would show you some little things that I have done to fix it, uh, as well as uh, just kind of add to what Dave at Toy Poloi has already done. Now, if you've gone to see his two-part video, it's really awesome, and that's where I got a little bit of hints on how to put back the wing wings properly. Uh, as I had taken it apart, and it didn't quite go up and down the way it should. Uh, but this Imperial Shuttle that I got was totally complete um, and uh, but the electronics were not working and uh, there and the landing gear would not come, go up or down I didn't want to break any plastic and so that meant uh, taking things apart and kind of making things work properly uh, the other thing that I ended up doing was getting rid of some of the yellowing uh, on it without doing any uh, retro brighting now I've retro brighted things in the past that's hydrogen uh, peroxide chemical and uh, since this had all the original stickers on it, I did not want to bathe that in uh, chemical nor take anything out f further apart uh, than needed to be done. I'll show you a little technique that I used uh, in order to polish things up here in just a moment. First, let's, uh, let's take a look at the landing gear. So the landing gear have some tabs back here that hold the gear in place. And I've seen several uh, pictures of Imperial Shuttles on eBay, and they are just sitting up with these landing gear locked up. And I would bet that chances are people have not figured out how to bring them down, or because for, for fear of breaking the plastic. So here's really all you need to do. Uh, so you see this little tab, those tabs right there? Take some plas uh, some oil that's especially uh, meant for plastic. Now, I happen to race slotless race cars that have plastic gears. That's why I bought this. And so you just apply a little oil there, a little oil there, right on those tabs. Now, you can ap apply it on where the pins are if you want, but that really is not what needs to be done. It's right here. And so, consequently, uh, they will snap in easily and also... Sorry about that. Got out of the camera there. Snap in and snap out pretty easily. This is such a big ship that it's hard to kind of get the whole thing in the camera. But that's really all you need to do for that. Now, uh, David Toy Poloi talks about the spring action here. Um, I did not need to take it apart because it was working just fine. But there are four screws, one, two, three, four, to get into that. Uh, the stickers... I did not want to remove. You can do that, uh, but I'll talk about a bad sticker experience with this thing that I had in removing one. And so I just like, no, it's uh, if it's not broken, don't worry about it. Okay, so that was the first thing that I did to get that fixed. Now, the next thing was the battery compartment. So here is where the battery compartment sits. And uh, this is where the motor is. And there are the two contacts you can see there. One of the tabs was, or pins, was broken. Now, what uh, Kenner did was they had little pins, that four pins that stuck up for these copper uh, <coughs> contacts to go into, and then they just melted it. You can kind of see where they smushed it. Well, that was broken. So one of the things that you can do is, uh, especially if you have slotless, or slotted cars, is this is a screw from a slot car pin. I purchase and build a lot of resin slot car bodies and so usually the guys that sell them come with those small screws so just dig a hole or drill a hole with a pin vise and then that'll put that into place now you can see here is the contact and so the next thing you want to do is to test out the motor now the motor it's got a little reed plastic reed like woodwinds and uh, that spins against that gear and makes that noise and you'll see there that we have the positive and the negative contacts now this happens to sit down here, there are these two pins that go into those two holes, and it sits, oops, just like so. There we go. <clears throat> now, if your motor is not working, again, you can use that same gear oil that I showed you right here to lube the armature. So what you want to do is to lube uh, lightly there, lightly there, 
no no need to lube that unless you want it to and then stick your batteries in okay so we'll do our positive we'll do our negative now these will spring out on you and then we press the contact together and you should get it to turn now if it doesn't hold the contacts in and somehow or hold the batteries like down on a flat surface here so they won't pop out and then kind of manually move that around and eventually you'll get that thing to move um, another trick that I've done is I've uh, when the uh, three volts have not worked is I've jump started using a nine volt and now I've I have pretty much all of the ships that had motors except for the A-wing many of the motors were stove up and I've gotten all of them 100% of them to work they're very durable uh, things so uh, don't give up if that's the case okay that's what I want to tell you uh, just keep trying and you'll be able to get that thing to work. So we'll slip that into place and uh, we'll see if those batteries pop out. Now, uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is how to get rid of some of the yellowing without being really, um, without put, applying any chemicals. It worked on this ship. This is the first one I've ever done this with. Uh, it was kind of an experiment because as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can see here's the canopy. And you'll see how nice and white it is but can you see the shading there well that shading was because that's where the former owner some years ago stuck the sticker that is supposed to be in here it was stuck right there and it doesn't belong there so i used dave toy Poloy's idea of uh soaking it in lighter fluid 90 percent of the time that works not this time it didn't come off at all I even with gently put the jackknife underneath it and then it started to wrinkle um, and it did come off in one piece but uh, with these old stickers it uh, a lot of the surface area flaked off so that's why I didn't mess with these stickers here I'm just like okay those are good I'm just gonna leave them they're they're just way too brittle with age what I ended up doing I thought I, well I'll, I'll try to polish it out and make it a little more even so I used a uh, sanding cloth from micro mesh this is 1800 grit and then i also use what i use in lapping in my gears on my slot cars as a polishing compound which you can get at any auto parts store and this is to really get out scratches and paint so it's a light abrasive kind of like toothpaste is and uh, you just polish it up and it started to take off the yellowing now not a hundred percent like retro writing does but enough that i'm like well, i'll try it on the rest of the ship I was pretty pleased with how that turned out overall. Um, I mean, you can uh, I'll, I'll take the camera out of the holder here, and, and you can see there that uh, it almost is like the yellowing adds some shading. Now, maybe the light's not great there, but uh, you can see way down there that it's uh, still pretty yellow. It's really yellow inside this area here, because obviously I didn't, didn't polish that up. And yellow clear back in this area. All right, so we'll put this back in the holder. Now, the next thing you want to do is to put the battery cover on. Make sure you put it on the right way so it slips right into this area here. And be very gentle with the tabs there so that way they don't snap off. Kind of stretch the plastic just a bit. There we go. So there's your door. So you got that in. You got your door in. Now it's time to put the wings on. Okay. And we're going to then move the horizontal state or vertical stabilizer away. <clears throat> what you want to do is to make sure that the spring tab, is, oops, that the spring is pointed in. So this slips in. You'll see that slot in there. Now, if this is broken, like what Dave Toy Poloy has, there's a 3D printed thing you can get off of eBay that comes with this and this gear here. Use some lithium grease on that. It had grease on it when I got it, and I don't think it matters which way this gear goes in. And then I added some light lithium grease there, too. And so what you're going to do is simply snap that gear into place, and then this is going to hinge in. There we go. And I am going to take the release mechanism down there and let that come down. Okay. So you really don't have a choice as to how this sets in there. See that? So this is, it's, a, it's either the pin's going to be up, and then when, it, when you bring the thing up, like so, 
then that allows it to snap back down. So we'll release the trigger. And you'll notice that I've got it on a stool here. And this way I can, and the school, stool just happens to be the right height for the shuttle's wings. Now we'll do the other side. The springs are not mirror images of each other, so they are just identical to... <coughs> they're the same mold, in other words. Alright, so now we're going to slip this gear into that groove right there. And then this is going to have to stretch a uh, point over that flange. Okay, so we'll put that into place. There we are. Now release the thumb mechanism, allowing it to drop all the way down. And now, as, now that it's totally relaxed, okay, now it's time to put on the tail. Vertical stabilizer, according to David Toy Poloi, oftentimes gets dense in several places, and this is where uh, several injection mold support places are. This one only has one, and it was fairly stable when I got it. Now, one of the things that you can do, you'll notice that this, uh, I can rock it back and forth and it's not moving. Well, it was moving when I got it. And so being a model builder, I have a lot of scratch stuff that I ought to have on hand. And so what I ended up doing was putting in some uh, shims on the inside of that and then gluing them in. Now, I'll show you exactly what I used here. So Evergreen Scale Models, uh, which Hobby Lobby sells this stuff, sells strip styrene. And if you can't get it through your local Hobby Lobby, you can get it through, you can order it through them yourself. And I just have various strips that I uh, have bought over time because I, I built a lot of scratch-built airplanes. Um, you'll see some of the stuff that I've done with my Hoth playset. And so this is... Uh, <coughs> 0.5 millimeters or 0.20 thousandths of, uh, of rod. And basically, you, you can just cut what you need and shove it in the gap right here. So where it's not going to be seen, you can see that white. And then it's styrene plastic, so use liquid cement and it'll instantly melt in. You can shove it in with a screwdriver a uh, very small jeweler screwdriver, but uh, the what I ended up using and uh, was uh, number 133, so this is uh, 30 thousandths by 60 thousandths. Um, I also used, uh, <coughs> let's see, what is this? Um, one by four, so that's the length, but uh, point, uh, 43 thousandths, and then the rod and because I needed something just a little bit smaller, so 20 thousandths rod. So number 218, 8104, and 133. So if you're looking for those um, at Hobby Lobby, those are the ones to get. Now, I will reassemble this thing as we go into this. So we're just going to basically set this on top, like so. Everything will line up. There. Okay. Paused a bit. Things weren't quite seating well. Now there's six screws that hold this thing down. And uh, I put all the screws inside a little jar here. Get all of them out. And we'll start with the first one. Drop it in, drop it in on the other side. And now we'll get that thing screwed in. Now one of the things I learned about working on a Model T Ford is uh, that you want to take up the screws evenly. Semi-tight on one side and then semi-tight on the other and then cinch it right up. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and do the underside. We'll tip it up like so. Actually, I'll snap in the battery part. Okay. And now we'll put in the four screws. 
go on the underside. Okay, so you have one there. Once I get it snug, then I will do the I'll do the others. Now we're going to pull this thing back, move this up forward so I can get at the rear screws. Okay. And right under there. And you don't want to over tighten metal screws into plastic. Just a word to the wise here. Michael at Retroblasting constantly talks about that. And that's really good advice. It's another guy that does some awesome restorations. If you haven't checked out his channel, please do. Okay. Alright, now we will double check the tension on these just snug there we go again don't over tighten this remember this plastic some you know 40 years old there we are mm -hmm. okay all right now According to the instructions, which incidentally I do not own, you're supposed to lift up the wings evenly. Okay, okay. Now, experience has told me that it's not going to release based on that. I'm going to have to pull these out just a bit, and there we go. Okay, so it works. Perfect. Okay, now the next thing to do is to put on the guns. And the guns are these little pieces right here, two pieces that go one on the other, slide into the other. <clears throat> I don't know that it matters which way it goes, but... Uh, I think the guns face inward like so. So you have one piece that goes into the other like that. So we'll snap that in. It's just a press fit. And there we are. Now we'll do the other side. Okay, and must have got it backwards. All right, there we are. Okay, now the next thing to test out is the side panel. My side panel did not fit properly when I got it, and uh, because this area was warped, and so tabs go in there and now it's going to be a press fit in what i ended up doing was taking a hair dryer heating it up just enough to be able to press the door in and then once it was in uh, then i took an ice pack and then cooled it down and now it fits you can see it fits just fine the other thing was the canopy tab also did not snap into place and I guess that's pretty common with those, so this tab here. So all I did was I took the hair dryer and heated it up just enough and bent it out. So this snaps into there, and then that snaps in there. Okay, now we'll rotate him around. Let's double check the sound. So we have our sound. The wings work. Um, yeah, so here we are. It, the whole thing is back together and uh, ready for display but anyway hopefully you found this really interesting and useful and for those of you wanting to maybe uh, get some more color out of your uh, imperial shuttle uh, hopefully you found this useful uh, and you can see now that uh, 
it still has some yellowing, uh, but actually it makes it almost look like it's got a little bit of weathering to it. So take care. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already.